endomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph. The idea that all of us fall into one of these three body type categories and we have specific meal plans that are, need to be designed around it can feel a little hoaxy, but even though this whole idea of eating for your body type, there really isn't much science behind it, there is one surprising truth behind this concept that can actually help you achieve your weight loss goals. Today I'm going to be diving into the details of eating for your body type, what it is and what you can actually take from it that will really help you achieve your weight loss goals in today's video. All right guys, if you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am, my name's Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. On my channel, I'm typically talking about the science backed and holistic methods that you can use in order to achieve your wellness dreams. So if you have a wellness goal in mind, make sure you subscribe. Now first, a little bit of information behind this idea of eating for your body type. So with this theory, there's three main different body types or rather a spectrum of being on these different types of body types. Now the classic ones are going to be ectomorph, which is where you're more small boned, likely to be a little lanky and have less curves. Mesomorph is where you're more likely to easily build muscle. And then endomorph, more likely to have a curvy figure or more likely to gain weight easily. So for example, just to give an idea of this, I would classically be seen more of as the ectomorph body type and then my fiance would be more of a mesomorph body type. So there isn't really a ton of research behind this idea that you should be eating for your body type but one really interesting thing that does come into play when you look at these factors is the importance of bio-individuality or making sure that you're eating according to your body's needs. So one really just easy example of seeing how we all have different needs is by looking at the milk sugar lactose. Now as babies we already have the ability to break down lactose in the body but as we get older a lot of us stop being able to produce that lactase enzyme, which means that you can no longer break down lactose or use it. This is where you're going to get more of that lactose intolerance. But depending on your heritage, some people are much more likely to actually still have that lactase enzyme and still be able to have dairy products without having any problems. Now this is called lactase persistence. And some interesting studies have found that those who are from Irish descent are likely 100% able to break down lactose still, while those of Asian or Australian descent are much less likely to break down lactose. Now, similar concept behind this that directly relates to weight gain is the idea of carbohydrate sensitivity. A carbohydrate sensitivity is basically where your body is going to secrete more insulin in response to the same amount of carbohydrates than others. And as we know, insulin is the storing hormone. So if you're going to be secreting more insulin in response to the same amount of carbohydrates, that means you're more likely to gain weight from those same amount of carbohydrates than someone else. And what research around the body type diet has actually found a little bit of inkling toward is that those of the endomorphic or mesomorphic body types are more likely to be more sensitive to carbohydrates and therefore more easily gain weight from carbohydrates. Now for this reason, if you are more of an endomorphic or mesomorphic body type, you might need to be more aware of the types of carbohydrates that you are consuming. So if you are of these body types and you are looking to achieve a weight loss goal, it might be in your interest to stick with those types of carbohydrates that are lower in starches. So things like leafy greens, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. Whereas if you are more of an ectomorph type of body, then you might not need to reduce your carbohydrate level as much in order to achieve a weight loss goal. So incorporating more starchy types of foods like oats and sweet potatoes are likely not going to impact your weight as much if you're more of an ectomorph body type. Now, if you are an ectomorph body type, does this mean that you should still be consuming a ton of pasta or white rice? Absolutely not, especially considering that according to the CDC, over 100 million Americans are living with type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes. Not to mention eating a lot of those refined types of highly starchy carbohydrates is really strongly linked to increased incidence of acne and breakouts. So no matter your body type, just sticking with those more whole food sources of carbohydrates and preferably the lower glycemic options for those carbohydrates is going to be best for overall wellness goals and the weight loss goals. So even though I'm more of the ectomorph body type, I'm still not eating things like rice and bread on a daily basis because this can still negatively affect overall wellness goals, including breakouts, which is something I've hugely noticed a decrease in when I've switched over to more lower glycemic foods. But regardless of body type, one of the most important macronutrients for achieving a weight loss goal outside of also your carbohydrate level and your carbohydrate sensitivity is going to be protein. Protein has been found to help significantly improve body composition and weight loss goals. And unfortunately, a lot of people really aren't getting enough protein to meet their body's needs. So especially if you're looking to achieve a weight loss goal and personalize it to your needs, I highly recommend that you check out this video next for five signs that you're not getting enough protein and how you can actually calculate your protein needs. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love the science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.